Crystal. Today I'm going to show you how to use, how to make this little, cute little clutch. I thought, you can put a handle on it, but I didn't. I thought it'd just be cute to carry with you, wherever you want to go. Um, you'll need some lace and a zipper. I got a zipper up here at the top and a button. And I just used four ply yarn, this regular Red Heart. And there is a lot of sewing with a needle and thread. So, but it's really not hard. And I think it turned out pretty cute. So let's go and get started on it. I'm using a size I. It's a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And you want to start with a slip knot. You want to do a chain of four. And then you want to slip stitch back in the first stitch to form a ring. Like that. And we're going to do 12 double crochets through the center of the ring. And I'm going to do a chain three, and that's going to count as our first double crochet. So now you need to do 11 more through the center. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through the first two, second two. Yarn over, go through the circle, grab a yarn, drop a loop. Yarn over and go through the first two, and then the second two. Yarn over, go through the center of the ring, grab your yarn, drop a loop. Three on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, and the second two. So counting my chain three, I have four so far. It's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and there's twelve. Now you want to slip stitch in the top stitch of your chain three, and that will close that round off. And sometimes, if you pull the tail real hard, sometimes it'll make your center a little bit smaller. Okay, now we're going to do two double crochets in every stitch around. And we're going to start with the chain three again. And that's going to count as a double crochet. And the chain three is always going to count as a double crochet in this project. So you're going to yarn over and go back through the same stitch. And that's two, that counts as two into that first, to the first stitch. So now you want to come over here to the next one. And do two in it. And then the next stitch gets two doubles. And then the next one gets two. Two in the next. Two in the next. Oh, my yarn's stuck down here. Oh. Two in the next. Just two in every stitch. And at the end, you should have a total of 24. Okay, 
Now, again, we're going to slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain three, and that's going to close that round out. With the chain three again. And now we're going to do the patterns going to be, every row is going to have a different pattern. So this row is going to be one double crochet in the first stitch. This is it. And the next stitch is going to get two. The next one will get one. The next one will get two. So here's a one. So we want to move over here to the next stitch. It's right here. Don't miss it. Sometimes it looks a little funky depending on where you put your slip stitch the previous round. But there's two in that one. And then one in the next, and then two in the next, and one in the next, and then two. When we do two in one stitch, we call that the increased stitch. So one, and then the next stitch is the increase two stitches in one and then the next one is just one and then the increase stitch and then the next one's one and then the increase and then one Increase one, increase one, increase one. Increase one, increase, and then one, and then you know you did it right if your last stitch is an increase. Should be an increase on the last one every time around. And then you want to slip stitch again. Every time around we're going to do this, it's a slip stitch into the chain three to close that round off. Okay, now we're going to chain three again. It's going to count as our first double. Now this round is going to be one double, one double, and then increase. So two, two, increase, two, two, increase. So this is our first one, and then one and the next and then the next one is going to be the increase two stitches in one the next one will be one next one's one and then the increase one one and then the increase Another way you can tell is the increases are always going to be on the, here's our increases from the previous row. It's always going to be on the last stitch of the previous increase. We just increase in this last stitch, this previous increase. So we'll go around again. It's going to be one, one, and as you can see there was the last increase the last stitch of it, and it gets two. So this is another way you can keep track. If you lose count, you can always look and see where your last increase was on the previous round, and I know that right here has to have another increase, the second stitch of the last increase. Okay, let me go ahead and finish this all the way around.
to the end. And my last stitch right here is the increase. So I know I counted right. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain again. And chain three. And now this time around, it's going to be one, one. one increase so three in a row and then an increase so this counts as my first one two three in a row and then my increase and then three in a row my increase three in a row my increase all the way around and then when you get back to here you just want to slip stitch chain three again your next row is going to be four in a row and an increase all the way around and the next one's going to be five in a row and an increase all the way around the next one will be six in a row and an increase till you get you just keep going add in one more in between the increases until you get as big as you want your circle and that's how you increase the circle and whenever you stop doing the increases then your circle will come up but we're not going to stop. We're just going to do all the increases. So right now I'm on the three in a row in the increase. And the next round, like I said, will be the four in a row in the increase. And so on and so on. I got four rows now. I'm working my, on my fifth. I'm not quite sure how many I'll do. Probably eight or so. I'll let you know in just a minute. I went ahead and did a total of eight rows. But you, you can always make it bigger if you want. And it's a different color because the first part of the video was just a clip from a different video I did just to show you how to increase the circle. So I didn't have to do it over. But I did eight rows. And now I want to put sew some lace on it. So I got my piece of lace here. And I got a regular thread needle and I put some regular thread on it. Now, if you have a sewing machine, it would probably be easier, but I don't have one, so <laughs> i got to do it the hard way. I'm just going to go sew it all around the edge. Okay. I'm just going to start here anywhere from the inside of the bag. And depending on what kind of lace you have, you can put it anywhere you want, up high, down low, however it looks best. I'm just going to go ahead and start it. Okay, shouldn't be able to see this thread too awful bad. I'll probably run it under the top of the stitch and then back through the lacy stuff. Now I'm going to kind of give it the appearance that it's kind of gathered up, which I said it would probably work better on a sewing machine, but until I get one, I got I just do it this way. Um, make your little stitches on it. I'm going to go back through the other side. I kind of make, when I'm coming from this side, I'll make kind of a a larger space in between my stitch there, from like from here to here. And when I pull it tight, it gathers up a little bit. You don't want to do it too much that it makes these stitches move, but that's one way you can do it. Or I'll kind of just hold it there and do it too, but I'm not really that good with the thread and needle though. I'm better with the yarn. <laughs> so basically this is all I'm doing. Going in and out. Trying to follow the same line on the lace so it looks kind of straight on the top. And to hide my thread a little bit, I'm just going under the top of the stitch and then going back through. I 
I do need a sewing machine really bad. I probably wouldn't even know how to use it though. I've never even used one before. Every once in a while, I'm going to stop and look and see what it's going to look like. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So this is all you got to do now. Just sew it on the best that you can. All the way around. You just want all the way around. Back to the beginning. And then we will, I'll show you how to sew some of, some of it together on the sides. So let me go ahead and finish sewing this on real quick. I got my the lace all sewn all the way around. I just tied it off. Knotted it up a little bit at the end. Then you want to fold it in half and get it all situated the way you want it. Normally I would use yarn to sew these, sew these up with, but since it has that lace on it, I'm just going to use the needle and thread again. And I'm going to put a zipper at the top. So, what I'm going to do is kind of measure, this is a 9 inch zipper, the one I'm using kind of measure about where it's going to go to. About like that. And then you can count on each side. To try to get it just about even. Like mine has seven stitches on each side. So I know that I have to sew up seven stitches on this side. And seven on this side. And you, you get it as best as you can. And at the end, after you get the zipper sewed on, if you need to add another stitch, it's fine. Okay. It's all how you want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and my thread and I'm going to sew up to seven stitches. And I'm just going to go directly through this one and through the lace and through that one. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the inside of this one. Start it like that. That way you can't see that tail. I'm just going to go right through like that and then back to the other side and to hide my stitch a little bit I'm going to go under the top part of the stitch and then back through I'm going to put the stitches a little close because it is going to be how the bag is going to be sewn shut at the bottom. So we don't want things falling out of it. If you're more comfortable using yarn to sew this up, 
don't see why you couldn't. It just thought maybe it might be a little bit harder to get through that lace. But you probably still could. I just didn't want to try it and risk ripping the lace up after I just had it all sewed on there. No, my luck, that's what would happen. Since I'm going under the top part of the stitches like that, and then going in, it's hiding the, the stitch up, or the thread up, pretty good. You want to do the set? Um, well, you decide where you want it, depending on how big a zip you get. But the same number of stitches on this side as this side, as best as you can. So it's kind of even. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, and if I need to add more later, I can. So I'm just going on and going inside of it like this. And I'm going to make a couple knots on the inside. Okay. I'm going to do the same over here. And then I'll come back and we'll throw the zipper on. The end's sewed up on it. And like I said, I can come back if I want. So, I'm going to start sewing the zipper on. I'm going to trim a little bit off the end. Okay. And I'm using my needle and thread again. And you want to start... Usually I start at this end down here, but I open it up all the way. And you want to put it down here where you're going to start. Hold it there. And stick your needle and thread through that, the zipper. It's just the hardest part is just getting it started. After that, it's easy. And then through. And we're just going to do it the same way. Sew it on. Same, kind of the same way we sewed the lace on. Follow it around. Through the zipper. And then through the lace and through the bag. And then back on this side. And then through the zipper again. And through the zipper on this side. Through the lace. Through the bag. Back again through the zipper. There, once you get started, it's easier to just hold it right up next to it like that. Make sure you got your lace out on it. You want it. It's just a little awkward getting it started, but there. And I'm just hiding the stitch that going to the top of the stitch like I did before. And then through the zipper. And again, if you have a sewing machine for this, it would it might work better. Easier anyways, but this bag's just pretty much sewing a bunch of stuff on with the needle. I think it's, it's good practice.
And I'm just going to keep doing this until the side, until I get down to the end here. I'm not going to make you watch me. <laughs> it's probably boring. Okay, I made it to the end with the zipper. And I had to use, I ran out of white thread, so I'm using pink. But I'll redo it when I get some white. And... Then I'm just going to bring this side over. What you can do is you can stop here and then start on this side and follow it over if you want. That way it's all lined up. That's probably what I'll do. Just sit it crossing over here. Be easier that way. Oh, that pink thread. I wish I would have had white. Now I have to redo it. Oh, well. Okay. And see, I didn't. I'll have to sew, I'll have to sew some more up here. But, gotta. Got some of it up. So, I'm gonna re-thread. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing. Open up my zipper. Hold that under, and I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side, all the way around. Sewed so on. Now I'm just finishing sewing up the rest of the way here to the top of the zipper, and I'm using thread again. You want to just sew it shut all the way as far as you can go. Okay, then you want to do this too on the other side if you need to. See, I'm going to have to sew this end of the zipper in and go up a little bit more, just sewing it together. Okay, once you think you got it sewed up good, you can knot it off. Okay, that's what we got so far. I'm going to put a button on it, just somewhere right here. I'm just going to use yarn and a yarn needle for that. So I'm just going to kind of guess center it or something a little bit. Hmm. And just sew it on like you would normally sew a button on. Okay, I think this would make just a cute little handheld clutch.
Oh, you can put a handle on it if you want to. I don't think that I will. I think I'll just probably leave it the way it is. And that's it. That's all there is to this tutorial. It's really, really easy. You just get, gotta you'd be able to use a needle and thread or a sewing machine. Um, don't forget to check out my Facebook page. I'll put a link below. And if you could subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. I'm trying to build my channel up. And until next time, have a good day.